Hey everybody, we are finally doing it. We're finally taking a look at one of the most requested soundtracks on this channel. And it's one that, to be honest, I had no idea what it even was. We are gonna check out the soundtrack to Hollow Knight. I know pretty much nothing about this game, so you are truly getting my immediate reaction and input. Let's check it out. Real quick, I want to point out, so obviously we are in the key of, of C minor. So 3-4, kind of a waltz feel. This is on what we might consider to be a pedal tone, right? So we're keeping this one C in the bass throughout this entire thing until just now when you heard we changed slightly. But the question is, is the harmony staying purely in C minor? Because if we listen, it does feel like it goes somewhere. We're not just sitting here on a, on a vamp, just like waiting for something to happen. That's not what we're doing. We are going somewhere, but the bass isn't changing at all. So it brings up the question of, well, what is happening here in the harmony? Is there any implied harmonic motion? Are there any other chord changes that one could actually sort of infer from the information that we're provided with here? Let's listen again. Same thing in the left hand. That's cool. We have a two against three, right? So we have our one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but our melody here goes one, two, three, right? We have this two against three. Now the way you would actually break that down is you would use our favorite thing that we've talked about. We talked about it in our last video about the Doom soundtrack, which if you haven't watched that, go check it out. There's a card right up here. This is a dotted quarter. The two against three within the three, four time signature is created with a dotted quarter. So we're essentially taking the first beat, but then we're not taking two or three, we're taking in between two and three. One, two, and three, one. Looks like this. If you had three quarter notes and you said, well, we know what a dot does to a note, it just adds one of the next smaller note. So in this case, a quarter note's made up of two eighth notes. Add another eighth note, you get three eighth notes. That's the value of a dotted quarter. If we stick three eighth notes into a three, four bar, it's gonna get us through the first beat and half of the second. So we're gonna count it one, two, and three, one. And that's how we get two against three in three, four time. We started out with this right hand figure that eventually transferred over to our left hand and it goes. Each one is repeated twice. The first one is C, G, B flat. We do that twice. Then it's C, G, A flat. Now, remember our first initial question. We're asking, does this imply any other harmony besides just sitting in C minor? Well, if we look at a C minor, nat a C natural minor scale, so far, all of these notes are just purely within the C minor, natural minor scale. Next one, C, F, G. And then we have one each of C, E, flat, F, and then C, D, E, flat. And that's the whole series. This feels like it goes somewhere. It doesn't feel like it's just sitting on C minor without doing anything, we hear a, a development. So what might that be? Let's experiment with some different sounds. Maybe something like that is implied. And the beauty of not having anything defined with the actual notes being played is that you can kind of use your ear to infer some of these potential changes. Now there I started with just a C minor seven, because we have that flat seven, C minor seven, and then I'm almost gonna look at it as though 
it's going to an F minor sound. Now we know that in this actual piece we don't change the root, but for the sake of being able to hear the harmony a little more clearly, let's go ahead and change the root. So we have C minor, going to F minor, and then it kind of feels maybe a little bit like it goes back. I'm gonna call it, let's go back to C minor, and then maybe we have a two in there. We have a D minor seven flat five, or D half diminished. Maybe we have like a G flat nine flat 13 sound in here, G7. That's pretty nice. Now, of course, that's not what we actually wind up with. We end up using the C pedal tone, which gives the impression that we're just sitting in that C minor, but with those notes shifting from line to line. And again, the beauty of it is that it's not defined. So you might hear it a little differently than I just played it, and that's totally okay. But the cool thing is that the way the music is composed, it gives you the feeling of hovering on this C minor sound while not becoming boring and just sitting on one chord endlessly. It does feel like it goes somewhere, and that's just that's just great writing. Hey, just before we continue, I want to remind you guys, you have one week left to purchase the Improv Essentials Bundle. It is a massive, massive discount. All three of our improvisation-related course offerings, available for like less than the price of a single course. It's like $270 value, I think, if you bought them all outright, and uh, it's available for 99 bucks, and it's only going to be available for another week, so take advantage of that. Link in the description below, I'll tell you more about it in a little bit. Oh, nice, yeah, 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 yeah. Check that out. So we have this. The ninth is such a beautiful melody tone. It's such a beautiful chord tone as well. And in case you're wondering, let's go ahead and look at E minor, the scale, right? That's E natural minor. Now we don't use E natural minor here and there's a dead giveaway as to why, which we'll get to in a moment. But if we were to give each of these scale tones a number, one, two, three, and then minor, that's of course a flat three in comparison to how the major scale would sound. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one, or eight. And that brings us right up to nine. And that's where we start our melody. And what a beautiful sound that is. Now that's our giveaway right there. That tells us we are not, in fact, in natural minor. We are in a mode. We are in one of the modes of the major scale. It happens to be the second mode of the major scale. Now let's do a little, little bit of quick math here. So E is the second degree of what scale? Well, let's go down one. Okay, let's take D, D major. We know we have two sharps. We have an F sharp and a C sharp. Cool, let's keep those, play all the same notes, but instead of going from D to D, let's just start from E and go to E. And we get what we call Dorian. Now, Dorian being the second mode of the major scale, that is a perfectly fine way to think about it, but there's a better way to think about it. And that is in comparison to E major. The simple question to ask is, what did we change from E major to wind up at E Dorian? And the answer is, we don't have that, we have this. So that's a flat three. One, two, flat three, four, five, six. Now normally we'd have this, but we don't. We have that. So it's flat seven, flat three, flat seven. Anytime you are starting from any note anywhere on the keyboard or whatever instrument you're playing, you can play a major scale and make the three and the seven flat and you will have the Dorian mode. One, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, one. And of course, if we're comparing to our natural minor scale, the only difference is that in natural minor, we have a flat six, but we don't in Dorian, we have a natural six. So, very clearly, we've established that that's the mode that we are in with this melody. With that note right there, that gives it away. 
five. And then we continue on down to the flat seven to the flat six. It's such a beautiful development after establishing that E Dorian bass line as our home bass, right? Let's get rid of all of that and let's just think about E Dorian as a sound. We'll let it sit there for a moment and then we'll go ahead and step down the same way we do in the piece to our D and then to our C. And you'll hear it just opens everything up and sounds so beautiful. Such a gorgeous resolution. Ooh, yeah. Woo. Ooh, very, very nice there. We go. Makes you think we're gonna go right back to the E minor, but we don't. We go a half step above to F major seven, and then continue our upward momentum with G, and then finally release it back to the E minor. That's a great tool to kind of create a little bit of subverting expectations with this growth and this emergence of a brighter, brighter, brighter. We're moving up, 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 more hopeful, more hopeful, and then we bring it back to our E minor home base. Beautiful writing. Five major seven. Oh, now we have B flat minor seven. Oh, so we've changed key. G flat major seven. E flat minor seven. B major. What are we gonna get next? Climbing down again. A flat minor seven. What do we got? Resolve, resolve. Yes, E flat major. That brings us back to where we were. Okay, that's really cool. We're sitting in this place, right? We're sitting in this E flat major place and we mess around with it. We go, go to the four, resolve here. But then one particular time we are in E flat major and we go, we go to the minor six, we go to C minor and then we go somewhere else entirely. We go to do this B flat, but instead of what you expect to hear, because you kind of expect that sound. You would expect the B flat chord to be major. You'd expect this D natural, but instead we get a D flat, making this chord B flat minor. And we're like, oh, well, that's a kind of an interesting sound, but then go to G flat major seven, which tells us we are now in a new key. We're in a new place. And we continue to develop the sound by going down to E flat minor seven, which is further just solidifying us in the new key. Then we get B major, which is like, yes, yes, yes. Now notice what we've done so far. We've gone from B flat down a third, G flat down another third, this time a minor third, down to E flat, down another third to B, and another third down to A flat. And this is where you start to feel like, hmm, where are we going from here? Because if we kept going with this theme, we'd end up there at E major, but we don't. We go from here to E flat, which is where we started the whole thing. Fantastic writing, absolutely beautiful. Now, obviously this is only a very small look into the music of Hollow Knight. As we've said with video game music time and time again, there's a brilliance to writing music that is both interesting yet able to be listened to 
for hours and hours on end. It is an art form, and it's one that the composer of the Hollow Knight soundtrack, Christopher Larkin, definitely has down. In fact, he even has his own YouTube channel where you can check out more of his work, and I'll put a link in the description down below to go check that out. Thank you for recommending it. I'm glad I finally got a chance to check it out. And yeah, I think this is something I'm probably just gonna have to like put on in the background <laughs> as I'm just going about my day because yikes, it is just incredibly beautiful. And before we go, I wanna remind you once again, the Improv Essentials Bundle is available for one more week only. You can get three courses, all of our improvisation related material available for the price of like less than one course. It's a $270 value if you were to buy each of the courses outright, marked down to just 99 bucks for a very, very, very limited time. So if you're interested in learning improvisation and then taking your skills to the next level, this is how you wanna do it. We start you out with an intro to improvisation. It'll give you all the baseline knowledge that you need to know in order to start your improvisational journey. And then once you have some of the basics down, we're gonna talk about modes because they are extremely important when it comes to improv. And Mind you, all of these things contain custom backing tracks, downloadable resources, and materials that you can use to improve your skills. And once you have covered an intro and you've covered some stuff about modes and you've got your, you're playing, you're kind of starting to work it out and you're starting to figure some things out, we're gonna hit you with some really, really great exercises done by my professor, the director of jazz studies at Purchase College, my alma mater, David De Jesus. He put together a fantastic course called the Improv Obstacle Course. It is an incredible 30 part series that will challenge even the best best improvisers. But don't fear because it doesn't matter what stage you are at, it is a challenge for everyone, beginner or advanced, and it'll help you improve your skills and take your improvisation to the next level. So very limited time, one more week. Be sure to use the link in the description down below or go to cornellmusicacademy.com slash improv essentials. That bundle will go away at the end of next week. So be sure to jump on that and take advantage of getting three courses literally for the price of pretty much less than one. And it's the best way you can support the channel. It really does a ton to help us continue to do what we love to do, which is creating this content for you guys. So thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. And please let me know in the comments below what else you would like me to check out along these lines. If it's more music from Hollow Knight that I didn't get to in this video, I want to know about it. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Someone coming off a plane with their neck pillow still on is a bit strange. <clears throat> That's what I thought until I someone saw someone get off a plane yesterday with the airplane seat still stuck to their ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dumb. That's the dumbest shit that has been read in a long time. <laughs>